your paints, brushes, and summer florals because we'll be painting spiritual bouquets! Welcome to In All Things, I'm Louisa Florentine and for this episode I'm joined by a wonderful and talented fine artist, um, Trisha Marion, and we will be talking all things art, faith, and her journey into becoming a full-time artist. So you're more than welcome to join us as we paint. Um, Feel free to sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, tea, whatever beverage you would like, and just listen in and create with us. Okay, hi Trisha, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing really well. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. I'm here with my cup of tea and I'm ready to paint with you. I'm excited. Yeah, me too, me too. Very excited. It's a great day outside. It's a perfect kind of weather for sitting in and doing some art. So I'm really, really excited to be here with you. For the viewers who are tuning in, we, uh, Trisha and I are actually going to make a spiritual bouquet in paint form. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so a spiritual bouquet, for those of you who don't know, is essentially usually given in card form and you write to wh whomever you're addressing it to, um, whatever, uh, act of faith that you did for them, whether that's attending mass or praying the rosary. So I thought it would be neat to paint with Trisha here um, an actual bouquet of flowers while she and I talk about her journey um, into becoming a full-time artist. So yeah. Um, so Trisha, um, could you let us know a little bit about um, what got you started um, in your, what, what made you interested to paint? Yeah, so I have always loved art ever since I was a little girl. Um, I always tell this story, but when I was a kid, I used to set out all of my coloring pencils in a row and I would take each pencil and kind of color in one line and then repeat the oh. whole process over again. Um, and my parents really encouraged me in my art, which was awesome. Um, my great-grandfather and my great-aunt actually were artists by a profession, so my family has always been very encouraging uh, with art. Um, and then I had an amazing art teacher in high school, a really, really wonderful woman who really challenged us and pushed us and never let us settle for a mediocrity, and that really pushed my skills. And then, and, and then I actually took a break and, and um, stopped producing art for a while and now I'm, I'm back to it so it's been quite a journey to get back to this point. You mentioned there was a quick break from art there. What happened during that time? So I actually used to be uh, working in politics <laughs> which is oh. very different from, from yeah. being an artist. I used to be really interested in all sorts of issues um, informed by the faith and also issues outside of things that were informing me by the faith and I wanted to make that sort of a difference in the world. Um, I cared about a lot of pro-life issues, I cared about, I still do care obviously, I, I cared about lots of like human trafficking things and, and slave labor and I really wanted to get involved in politics to try to change some of those conversations and to to make an impact in those in those decisions and um, so yeah I did my degree in political science at the University of Toronto I went and I worked for an MP for a year um, and then I actually got quite sick <laughs> um, oh. which I think was God's way of kind of redirecting me to this which was really my first love and something that I'm super happy to be doing again so so yeah that was my my brief stint away from art um, and into the world of politics. So before we continue on, actually, what uh, step shall we begin here in our little, what yeah. do you suggest we start with? Maybe what you could do or an idea is to pick a flower that you want to represent something. So like, you know, a rose can represent a rosary, a, a lily can represent going to mass, a sunflower can represent an Our Father, however you want to do it. Um, and then, yeah, create your bouquet around that. It can be something super simple. Like I said, I'm just doing 
one flower and lots of kind of um, leaves and like little kind of small flourishes or it can be very complicated um, but that's what I would do and then I would kind of do a rough drawing of that and then use whatever colors that you have to fill it in. I love that. I love that. Um, sunflower for me is, um, I don't know, I just get so happy when I see one. Yeah. So I'm going to gonna try to, to paint it. Fingers crossed. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, and I also, I can't remember where I, I heard about this, but apparently sunflowers, um, they grow towards the sun. But just on a spiritual sense, like that's a beautiful metaphor, right? You grow growing towards... Um, or like even following the father, right? Following the son. Whoever decides to do this exercise, when you finish it, you can give it to someone and actually do that for them. You can offer up the rosary or offer up a novena or whatever, go attend mass for them. I think it's kind of a beautiful practice. It would be so opportune for, for us to be giving these things right now, you know, uh, as a creative way to bond spiritually with our friends, our relatives. You know, to be able to let them know that, oh, I'm thinking of you and, you know, I did a novena for you or I offered up mass for you. So, yeah, you mentioned in your um, kind of brief story about how you got started painting, how your mom uh, would tell this story often. Did you um, have to have a conversation with your parents about switching gears to from politics to art. Yeah, I've been very fortunate that my family has always kind of deferred all of our decision making to the Lord. As much as the kind of worldly fears that, you know, you need a stable job, you need a stable income, try to kind of achieve these worldly positions, that, that is still important in some senses. My family has always kind of deferred those things to what might be more important, what God is calling you to, whether it makes a lot of money or not so when I decided to do this full-time they were super supportive because it's something that they knew that I had been praying about for a long time um, and also I like I mentioned I was quite unwell for a period of time for a few right. years and they had seen me kind of struggle through that um, and they knew that I needed a bit of a lifestyle change in order to be able to maintain my health and so because of that they were really great about, yeah, supporting me fully. Like I am a full-time artist <laughs> um, and I still live with my parents and I am so grateful that I have the opportunity to build my career um, with the support of my family um, behind me. Yeah, there was a lot of peace in that decision, fortunately. That's good, that's important. I, I um, My spiritual director always tells me to follow the peace because that's yes. where you know the Lord is. Yeah. Um, in that uh, place of calm, because yeah. you know God is is not God is not um, a forceful God. He's not uh, a rageful God. He's he he loves us tenderly and graciously. So yeah. Yeah, and I remember someone saying to me once when I was going through a particularly difficult time in my personal life um, that that Jesus, you know, he there's three facets where he is present. Um, and and those are when things are peaceful, when they are life giving, and when they're transparent. He's never going to try to be to do to do something to you that's not going to be life giving, or that's going to cause you a lot of disturbance, or that you're going to have to hide from other people. He's always going to give you things that he wants you to share with people that he where he wants you to feel like you're getting a lot of life from it, where you have a lot of peace. And that does I mean that doesn't always mean it's easy, but I think kind of following those three guidelines and the decisions that I've made have, have brought me a lot of joy and have kept me, kept my spiritual life strong. Did you do like a particular um, process of discernment or prayer Lord. to the Lord? Like, Lord, like, you know? Yeah. What was that process like? I kind of came into this kicking and screaming a little bit, I would say. Um, I really care about politics. It's still something I really care about. And I... The skill set that I had growing up lended itself to that type of a field. And so it took a long time for me to accept the fact that that wasn't going to be the direction I was going in, at least for now. Um, and God is so gentle. Like, I was supposed to go back to school. I, I started my master's degree and I had to leave my master's degree partway through. And, and each step of it, I really had to reevaluate where my value lay. Um, 
because I think even though I've had my faith for quite some time, not my whole life, but for most of my life, I still valued myself based on what I was able to do mm-hmm. from a worldly perspective. Yeah. Um, and God does not want me to value myself or want anyone to value themse- themselves on what they perceive to be a worldly good. He wants us to value ourselves because he created us and he loves us and he died for us and and we were made in his image and likeness, you know? And so it was a long process because I wasn't um I wasn't one who came to this decision very easily. Um but God was so gentle and each step of the way he kind of guided me and prodded me along and and gave me his guidance in ways that I was slowly able to accept and slowly able to accept and slowly able to accept until I've gotten to the point where now I can fully own like this is what the Lord is asking me to do and this is the way in which he wants me to change the world. It doesn't want to be through this kind of way that I thought in my head. It wants to be in this smaller way in this in this way that reflects beauty, you know? And so yeah, I would say it wasn't a discer- I didn't I didn't intentionally discern to go into this field. I I kind of got here because God has been good to me and because I desire him so much that he slowly kind of pushed me into this through many different things that have happened in my life. Say that takes a lot of courage to be able to, you know, um, reassess uh, where you are and, you know, trust that whatever God calls you, especially if he wants to make you you know, turn abruptly from this uh, path that you're on. So for you, it was politics initially. And, you know, somewhere down the road, he was wanting you to to take that turn. So it takes a lot of courage to to be able to pause and um, reflect and re-root yourself. Have you ever heard of God being likened to a GPS? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've heard that yet. No, <laughs> that's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he, essentially he's our you know spiritual GPS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really like that. Yeah. It's very relatable. <laughs> so for those of you tuning in, um, Trisha and I are making a spiritual bouquet, um, and we're visually. Uh, representing that through paint. Um, I'm making a sunflower and she's making a rose. I'm actually using acrylic here, but I believe, Trisha, you're using watercolor, right? Yes, that's correct. Yes, so really, guys, whatever you have at home, um, if you want, if if you would like to paint with us, feel free to use whatever um, tools you have at your disposal. I'm just, I just kind of um, rummage through my old um, art supplies and just got whatever I had. <laughs> I personally, I like homemade. I like homemade gifts because it's, yeah. you know, there's a lot of thought that goes into it. So yeah, it's like, don't, don't feel intimidated to have to buy new materials for this. Um, even if you have like, you know, pencil crayons or markers, you can still make a spiritual bouquet from that. So yeah. A lot of love. <laughs> That's the key. Lots of love. <laughs> what fun projects are you uh, working on now? Um, if you could share some with us. For sure, yeah. I So I think the big mission, my big mission and goal with my job is, and this is what the Lord kind of revealed to me, is to evangelize the world through beauty. So that's like the, the big thing. Um, and uh, But I also want to create things that like, can draw people who maybe don't know Jesus or don't know Christ into maybe looking at images of Jesus and looking at images of Christ. So I'm really excited. I'm working on like a recipe kind of series (laughs) of like, yeah, like fun things like, um, like lemonade recipes and chocolate chip cookie recipes that I'm trying to illustrate and, and draw and create prints for and maybe attract some people who might not otherwise be interested in some of the things that I make. Um, and yeah, because I, I think you know we all have common experiences, even those who who don't who don't follow the faith, and and I would like them to to be part of those experiences, and then maybe perhaps draw them closer to Jesus in some some capacity, some indirect capacity. So yeah, and the thing is, I think for me a lot of it comes from like, growing up, a lot of my friends 
are not necessarily people who find the church a very comforting place. Um, and I want to show them that they're, them and I have a similar experience, you know, it's just that I have found Christ, I found God, and, and through that I've been able to experience life in a much more full, exciting way. Um, and so I think part of my art, what I want to do is reach out to those same people who I love and who I care about, who struggle with this very important part of my life, who <laughs> struggle with the church. For those uh, people who are, you know, just now tackling a small business of their own. Actually, you know, the pandemic affected a lot of um, small businesses and, but also it kind of gave them a nice arena to be creative in how they provide their services. Um, what advice would you give to people who are either starting are wanting to start right now or maybe like you know that phoenix rising from the ashes of the pandemic and are wanting to revisit or restart or revamp their business yeah i my best advice is just go for it honestly um so i did not have any social media for i've had i haven't had social media for the last like five or six years and starting Instagram was super stressful for me because I had no idea where to begin. <laughs> I didn't know how to use the platform. I didn't have any apps on my phone, really. It was, yeah, it was kind of hard and stressful. But uh, I think you just have to do it. Just like put yourself out there. Don't be afraid. Um, ask people for help. Like I really think that is an underrated thing to do is to ask people for help. Um, I asked so many people for help, so many people for favors. Uh, my my brother's fiance helped me design my website. <laughs> my fiance helped me like do Instagram. <laughs> my sister took pictures from my website. I really relied on the people around me. Um, so don't be afraid to ask for help from people around you and just go for it. Like I always think like, you know, we have to do whatever we can with our gifts. I remember one day I was walking on a trail and my hand started to cramp because um, there's carpal tunnel in my family. And I remember thinking like, I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to paint comfortably. You know, I just don't. And maybe it'll be for the rest of my life or maybe it'll be for the next 10 years because my carpal tunnel will get really bad. Um, and I have to use this time where my hand feels, you know, somewhat normal to paint because I love painting and I love being able to use my hands and I just don't know how much time I have to do that. Also, I mean, this is, this is more spiritual, but just to like keep God present in all of those decisions, um, something that I started doing and I, I recommend to anyone who is thinking about starting a small business and is kind of terrified uh, is just starting and ending each of your business days in prayer. So just like make it a point in the morning before you start work to offer up your work to the Lord and at nighttime to offer up your work to the Lord. Um, and that way you're never getting too attached to either the outcomes or the business itself because even at the end of the day we don't want this to be everything for us and so i think that is essential <laughs> and and like i said just don't be afraid and and go for it because yeah you just don't know how much time you'll be able to use those gifts and talents that you have you mentioned how you had you know just a team of people helping you um establish your brand could you talk a little bit about uh the symbolism behind your logo. The logo took a very long time to design because I kept re re coming back to it and redoing it and redoing it. Um, one of the things is I wanted to incorporate flowers. I wanted to incorporate a symbol of Mary. Um, my middle name is Marion and my mom gave me that name because she wanted to put Mary somewhere in my name. <laughs> um, and so I wanted to make sure that Mary was incorporated in some capacity in my logo and that was through the flowers that are present there. Um, then there's kind of like an M and then there's an M that's kind of shadowing it. And yeah. and I think, and that's quite, it's kind of in similar vein. I wanted it to be, I want what I do to mirror what God asks of me to do. Wow. And, and I want it to be like, I want to have the same attitude that Mary had toward Jesus, you know, where she, she was able to be so obedient to him and so one in his will that she reflected all of the light that he had. And so that kind of shadowing, I guess, imagery is supposed to be a symbol of that. Um, and yeah, and I don't know, there's so many things. Um, I remember, I think it was 
Bishop Robert Barron, but I can't remember who said this. Someone said like uh, beauty is the arrowhead of evangelization. And I think it was Bishop Barron. I could be totally wrong about that. <laughs> um, but Maid Marian is also a character in Robin Hood. <laughs> and Robin Hood, one of his like big symbols is a bow and arrow. And I, I was initially trying to incorporate that somehow. It didn't quite work the way that I wanted. Um, but I wanted those kind of lines and figures to be of the 1M to be quite straight to kind of represent that that arrowhead or that you know arrow and bow of, of evangelization because I think that's such a wise wise quote whoever said it <laughs> um, was very articulate in, in saying that but I'm super happy with the way that it turned out and I think it does kind of remind me of why I do what I do <laughs> that's good that's important you know to have yeah because I think you know, as we progress through our career or just, you know, in meeting a certain goal, sometimes we can get lost in in the hustle and bustle of things. So it's nice to have that reminder of this is why I do what I do. Yeah. So, so yeah, I've been, you know, just looking through your Instagram and I saw that you'll also like a particular movie. Oh that yeah. I, yeah. You've got mail. Yeah. Like, that's one of my favorite movies of all time, I think. It I I just love that movie. I like it better than Sleepless in Seattle, even though it's very controversial because I know a lot of people who like Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan think that's their best movie. Um <laughs> I love that movie. And I don't know enough people who love that movie. <laughs> really? I I find it such a it's one of those like just gems. I I guess you could say hidden gems. Yeah. That it just puts you in such a warm and fuzzy mood whenever you watch it yeah it it to me is like the perfect celebration of kind of the little joys in life you know the lines are great the the love story is so like pure it's so like makes you so happy I don't know it, it's just so beautiful it really makes me like after every time I watch the movie I go outside and I just notice things that I don't notice before um and I used to watch the movie every single year before I started university because it used to get me in the mood of like going back to school and just being excited and and I wanted to own a bookstore for a long time because of that movie so it yeah I love that movie so much and I love that line I, I did a print of one of the lines of the movie about her looking at a butterfly getting off the subway and I just love the imagery that that, that presents and how lighthearted it is you know <laughs> I think it's important to, to be lighthearted sometimes and to yeah just feel happy and that movie definitely does that for me I don't know there's something very romantic about taking the time to be slow and and write letters and be purposeful in your interactions and and look for the pretty things so it sort of just hit me like I think that's kind of what art achieves for me is, is just that um that it gives me that space to slow down and to just yeah, be romantic about life, you know, and it kind of just be in in conversation with with the Lord, you know, because totally, yeah. he, God the Father, you know, he's the creator of all things, and so mm -hmm. whenever we we exercise our creativity, we're really because we're made in His image and likeness, right? So we're really marrying that trait in Him, and we're inviting Him to be in that creative space with us. So that's right. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I think, I think that for me too, when I create art, I'm also really drawn to thinking about the Holy Spirit. And I think it's because I don't know what it is, but when you kind of get in that creative zone, like I just feel very drawn to the Holy Spirit. I feel like I'm most able to be open to the Holy Spirit, like working in that kind of, when I'm in that kind of frame of mind. And and yeah, I think art going slow is kind of, and art kind of go hand in hand. You know what I mean? Like you can go quickly and produce something quickly, but if you are able to kind of go slow and take your time and really think about what you're creating, you're, you're able to be really open to what God can do in you and in your life. And it, and it kind of makes you think about everything else in your life too. And, and what, you know, where God is calling you to and where he has you right now and how he wants you to, um, express his his words and his gospel and his love to people so yeah I mean that that's inferencing a lot but <laughs> I, I really do feel all of those things when I kind of get into that creative headspace
Yeah, and um, you know, it's I think that's the hallmark really of um answering the call to what God is inviting you to do with your life. Um, and you know, I'm not saying that this is maybe what He's telling you to do for the rest of your life, but for now, you're really saying that yes so beautifully to Him when He approaches us. He's his voice is his voice is uh, soft, but his voice is sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Actually, can I have a little check in on how you're doing with your painting? Yeah, I'm all yeah, finished. I'm all finished. Hello, Here's hello the world. This is our <laughs> painting. Um, yes. Yeah, so it was so much fun talking with you, Trisha. Thank you so much for this amazing chat about art and faith and just your journey with God right now um, in your life. Uh, and for the viewers here, thank you for joining us. This again is uh, just a way for you to visually depict a spiritual bouquet. You know, it's always fun to be creative, especially now, and to not underestimate the the beauty of giving just because, you know, the beauty of giving cards just because and, and not having it attached to any particular holiday um, and just letting someone know that, you know, you care about them and you love them and you're thinking of them. So with that, I would just like to say again, thank you to our special guest here, Trisha, for joining us. Um, how can people find you and follow you uh, online? So my uh, handle on Instagram is Made Marian Illustrated, um, and then my website is www.mademarianillustrated.com. Amazing. Okay. Well, with that, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope whoever receives your sp spiritual bouquet can see the beauty in it. Thank you. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day, too. It's been so nice to so speak nice with you. Same here. Well, take care, and God bless. Alright, bye. That's all for today, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I learned so much about courage, discernment, and following God's voice through my chat with Trisha. If you painted with us uh, in making a spiritual bouquet, or in my case, a spiritual flower, I hope you had fun as well. Whether you're giving it to a friend, a family member, or a stranger, remember to give it with love. Until next time, see you on Email. Day.